I had written down this uh, theorem yesterday. Let us look at uh, a proof of that okay and also discuss other uh, uh, consequences uh, how one could use elementary matrices and then uh, as I mentioned yesterday a summary of uh, how elementary matrices are related how uh, related to invertible matrices then homogeneous equations non homogeneous equations okay that is what uh, uh, we will uh, discuss today. So let me write down the theorem once again I have a square matrix with real entries then the following uh, statements are equivalent. For a square matrix the following statements are equivalent. First statement is uh, A is invertible. Second statement A is uh, rho equivalent <coughs> to the n by n identity matrix. That is the second statement. Third statement is A is uh, a product of elementary matrices. A is a product of elementary matrices. Okay, so we want to see how these uh, uh, statements are equivalent. Okay, let me let me prove. So the usual schema will be to prove A implies B, B implies C, and then C implies A. Okay, I'll follow that uh, idea. Then it would mean that these three statements are equivalent. Proof first: A implies B. Okay, I want to show that if A is invertible, then A is row equivalent to the n by n identity matrix. Remember the problem that I gave you yesterday. If R is a row reduced echelon matrix which I know is invertible then R is equal to identity. Okay, suppose A is invertible let me just write down the statement A suppose that A is invertible we are required to prove that A is row equivalent to identity. I will write that statement also to show that A is rho equivalent to the n by n identity matrix. Let us take uh, R as the row reduced echelon mat echelon form of A. So let R be the row reduced echelon matrix row equivalent to A. See we know that every matrix can be reduced to a row reduced echelon form. That form I am calling as R as before. Then we had seen yesterday the uh, that Okay, if R is a row reduced echelon matrix row equivalent to A, it means A is equivalent to R. Okay, this is the notation for that. We had seen yesterday that this means I can write the R as P times A, where P is a product of elementary matrices. If B is row equivalent to A, then B is P times A, where P is a product of elementary matrices. That is what we proved yesterday. Okay. So R is equal to P times A where P is a finite product of elementary matrices. This was uh, demonstrated yesterday. So I am making use of that here. Now what I know is that uh, a product of 
each elementary matrix is invertible, the product of invertible matrices is invertible that was proved yesterday. So, P is invertible, I am given that A is invertible, I know then that the product P A is invertible, so R is invertible, so R is identity. Since P is invertible and A is invertible, we conclude that R is invertible, but we know that if this happens, R is a row reduced echelon matrix. So, if it is invertible, then it must be equal to identity. Okay, and so R is equal to I. So I go back and substitute in this equation. Okay, from this, can we directly say A is row equivalent to the identity matrix? A is row equivalent to R. That's uh, what I have written down here. R is identity, so A is row equivalent to I. That is uh, statement B. A is row equivalent to the identity matrix, okay. So that proves A implies P, okay, okay. B implies C. So you will see that the results today, for instance, will be kind of a summary of all that we have discussed till now, okay. B implies C. Let us prove this next. A is row equivalent to given that A is row equivalent to the n by n identity matrix, I must show that uh, A is a product of elementary matrices. I will appeal to the same result that uh, we proved yesterday. If B is row equivalent to A, then B is equal to P times A, where P is a product of elementary matrices. Then I equals P times A. Where P is uh, <coughs> a product of elementary matrices, you remember I want to show that A is a product of elementary matrices. If A is, is that okay? We are proving B implies C. I want to show that A is a product of elementary matrices, okay? So, what I will now do is list. identity is E L, <coughs> E L minus 1 etc. E 2 E 1 times A. That is the, I know that P is a product of elementary matrices. So I have written down this product E L, E L minus 1 etc. E 1 times A. Okay, please remember that this is P. I know that I can write like this. Now what I know is that each elementary matrix is invertible, so I will uh, pre-multiply by first E L inverse, then E L minus 1 inverse etc. So let me just do the first step, also write what I am doing, pre-multiplying by A L inverse, sorry E L inverse. Each elementary matrix is invertible I know, each elementary matrix is invertible, so I will take this equation pre multiply by E L inverse for instance, I get uh, okay, I will do fully E L inverse, E L minus 1 inverse etc. E 1 inverse pre multiplying by this, I get uh, on the left <coughs> E L minus E L inverse, E L minus 1 inverse etc. E 2 inverse, E 1 inverse times identity is equal to A. You are right. E one, E two, E L minus one. Yes, that's perfect. So this is what I have. This means what? A is equal to E one inverse etc. E L inverse, which is a product of 
elementary matrices this is a product of elementary matrices because the inverse of each elementary matrix is another elementary matrix it is an elementary matrix of the same type does not matter it is an elementary matrix okay. So I have written A as a product of elementary matrices what is the reason since the inverse of an elementary matrix is again an elementary matrix okay this last step because the inverse of any elementary matrix is again an elementary matrix so I have written E as a product of elementary matrix okay so that is that statement B implies C okay finally C implies A. C is A is uh, the statement C is the matrix A is a product of uh, elementary matrices statement A is capital A is invertible but this is something we have seen yesterday okay C implies A we have uh, already seen C implies A let uh, A be a product E1 E2 etc ES. where uh, each uh, E i is uh, an elementary matrix I must conclude that A is invertible okay but since each E i is invertible the product on the right is invertible hence that is A is invertible right away there is nothing C implies A follows uh, from the fact that each elementary matrix is invertible and the fact that uh, a product of invertible matrices is invertible okay. So th this is one summary this is one summary connecting row equivalence elementary matrices invertible matrices. One of the corollaries of this result is the following one of the consequences I will state that as uh, a corollary. let uh, A be invertible I have an invertible matrix A okay then I know that A is row equivalent to identity what this result says is you do the same sequence of elementary row operations that you do on A to get I on I you will get A inverse. from A to I you perform a sequence of elementary row operations this corollary says you perform this sequence of elementary row operations on the n by n identity matrix you will get the inverse matrix A inverse how do I put it the same sequence of elementary row operations on A yielding I the same sequence of elementary operations performed on A yielding I when applied to identity yield A inverse the same sequence 
yields A inputs. Okay, that's uh, the statement. Proof is the statement clear? So this gives a method to construct uh, the inverse of a matrix if you know it is invertible by a sequence of elementary row operations. Proof there is a sequence of elementary row operations that I do on the matrix A to get the matrix identity which means I can write identity as uh, let us say E L, E L minus 1 etc. E 2, E 1, A. The first operation is E 1, second operation E 2 etc. Last one is E L. I do these operations in this sequence on the matrix A then I get the identity matrix. I know that this happens because A is invertible. I am using the previous result. If A is invertible then A is row equivalent to the identity matrix. I want to show that when I do this same sequence of operations on uh, I, I get A inverse. Okay. What is given is that A is invertible. Okay. So I post multiply by A inverse. Since A inverse uh, exists by post multiplying by A inverse, the this equation I post multiply by A inverse, I get the following. I get A inverse on the left, on the right E L, E L minus 1 etc. E 1, E 2, E 1, A into A inverse. Matrix multiplication is associative. So I insert a bracket uh, in the end like this. But this you see is precisely E L, E L minus 1 etc. E 2, E 1 being operated on i times i. I am emphasizing that uh, this is done on i. I could have just left this as it is but this does not tell you that you are performing these operations on i. So that is why the last i I have retained here. It is not necessary to include this right. Identity is the multiplicative identity matrix is the multiplicative identity of the multiplication operation. So I am making it a point to retain this i to emphasize the last uh, part that you are doing this sequence in the same order on the identity matrix to get A inverse. Okay. Okay, Let us consolidate do one numerical example and proceed with uh, the theory. Example where we must know that uh, the matrix is invertible. Okay. Okay, so let me give a numerical example. Find the inverse of the following three by three matrix: one, one, zero, zero, one, 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 zero, See when I do the elementary row operations uh, I will eventually know if this matrix is invertible okay. But I have chosen this example in such a way that it has an inverse that is I have verified that this matrix is row equivalent to identity. I am going to use the previous result I will do the same sequence of elementary row operations uh, on I that I do for A to get A inverse okay. For that it is uh, convenient to append the identity matrix to the matrix A and do the operations for this A and identity together. So I will append this matrix together with the identity 1 1 0 0 1 1 1 0 1 put a vertical line and then write identity of order 3. I must reduce this part to the identity keep doing the same sequence of uh, operations on the second part. If this first part reduces to the identity the second part should reduce to A inverse. This time I am not going to write down the row operations tell me if uh, the steps are correct.
that is the first step, I am keeping the first row as the pivot row, the operation, elementary row operations are performed uh, keeping the first row. Next step is uh, I will keep the second row as it is. then I add uh, second and the third rows. Right? So, to get uh, 0, 0, 2, I add the second and the third rows, minus 1, 1, 1. I add the second and the third rows. Next step is divide by 2. I will do that here itself. Okay. Just uh, let me write down once again. 1, 0, minus 1, 1, minus 1, 0, 0, 1, 1. 0 1 0 0 0 1 minus 1 by 2 1 by 2 1 by 2. I want to make uh, these two entries 0. So, the next operation I will keep the third row as it is. I am keeping this as it is uh, just add 1 0 0 second row minus this plus this okay so i see that uh, at the last step i get identity this is uh, equivalent to a this is identity and so I know that uh, the second part must be A inverse. So, A inverse I take 1 by 2 outside 1 minus 1 1 1 1 minus 1 minus 1 1 1. This is the inverse of A. It is always a good practice to check that uh, this satisfies uh, the equation a b equals identity one must actually verify a b that is you can call this b one must verify that a b equal to b a equal to identity okay but what towards end of today's lecture we will see that uh, it is enough if you verify one of them. It is enough if you verify that either A B is identity or B A is identity. We will show that uh, a matrix which has a left inverse or a right inverse if the matrix is a square matrix then it will be invertible okay. okay. So, it is always a good practice to verify that you have got the inverse correctly. Uh, some uh, some other uh, uh, consequences typically one that uh, would uh, relate uh, to homogeneous equations non homogeneous equations is the following theorem. For uh, a square matrix A the following statements are equivalent. First statement uh, as before A is invertible, A is invertible, 
second statement the homogeneous system AX equal to 0 has only the trivial solution has only the trivial solution X is equal to 0 that is the second statement. Third statement is now about non homogeneous systems. The non homogeneous system AX equal to B has a solution for uh, all B. That is the third state. The non homogeneous equation has a solution for all B. These three, these three statements are equivalent. If A is invertible, then uh, any non homogeneous system will have a solution. B element of Rn okay again uh, we can prove A implies B, B implies C, C implies A. I would uh, follow a slightly different approach. I will prove that A and B are equivalent then prove that A and C are equivalent then it would follow that these statements are equivalent okay. This is not a very efficient way of doing it but this is rather easier. So I will prove A if and only if B first okay. Proof I will as I mentioned I want to show that A and B are equivalent. I want to show that A and B are equivalent. Okay, first A implies B. Consider uh, so statement A is with me. A is in capital A is invertible. Consider the system A x equal to zero. I know that A inverse exists. I'll pre-multiply by A inverse. A inverse into the 0 vector that is a 0 vector A inverse into A is identity by definition matrix multiplication is associative. So this is identity X right hand side is 0 that is X equals 0. So if A is invertible then the homogeneous system has uh, only the 0 solution. I must prove the converse B implies A. B implies A is something that uh, we have already seen in a slightly different language. B implies A. The homogeneous system has uh, 0 as the only solution. Then we know that uh, A is rho equivalent to identity. Okay. This was proved uh, some time ago. A is rho equivalent okay even the previous no this was proved some time ago. If uh, AX equal to 0 has 0 as only solution then A is rho equivalent to the identity. So let me write this in this case A is rho equivalent to the identity appeal to the previous theorem appeal to the previous theorem B implies A previous theorem statement A is A is invertible statement B is A is rho equivalent to Y we have proved that these two are equivalent. So I will simply appeal to that in this case A is rho equivalent to Y by the previous theorem previous result A holds by the previous result A holds okay okay. So A and B are equivalent that uh, has been demonstrated. As I mentioned I will next prove that A and C are equivalent I will first prove uh, A implies C that is again uh, as easy as A implies B earlier okay the first part A implies B if A is invertible we have shown that uh, 
homogeneous equation has 0 as the only solution. So let us prove A implies C, consider um, X as A inverse B given any B. I know that A is invertible that statement A. I look at the vector X defined as A inverse B. B is a given right hand side vector then AX is A, A inverse B is B that is X solves AX equal to B. Now this I can do for any right hand side vector B all that I need to do is pre multiply the right hand side vector B by the inverse of A which I know because statement A holds. Statement A holds A inverse exists pre multiply the right hand side vector by A inverse I get a solution. So that is A implies C I need to show C implies A this is probably the toughest okay. So I need to show C implies A that would uh, complete the proof of the theorem. I want to show that A is invertible so as before I look at the row reduced echelon form of A. Let uh, R be the row reduced uh, echelon matrix row equivalent to A. I will show that R has the last row non-zero. We show that the last row of R is non-zero. Is it clear that uh, this would mean uh, that R is identity? If R is identity then it means uh, A is row equivalent to I appeal to the previous theorem A is invertible. So we are proving C implies A. So if I show that the last row of R is non-zero then it follows that A is invertible. To show that the last row of R is non-zero I need to show that this system Rx equals I look at a specific right hand side vector all entries 0 except the last entry which is 1. If I show that this system has a solution then it follows that the last row of R cannot be 0 because if the last row of R is 0 then the last row of R into X will give me 0 on the right hand side I have 1 so that is not possible. So if I show that this system has a solution X then it follows that the last row of R is not 0 okay. So to show that Rx equal to 0 has a solution X so this is what we will show I suppose this is clear I have taken this specific entry to be 1 this could actually be any non-zero entry okay. But R is row reduced uh, echelon form of A so R is P A where uh, P is a product of elementary matrices. If B is row equivalent to A then B is P times A where P is a product of elementary matrices. So what happens to this system let us call this as B prime I will call this B star I am rewriting, rewriting this uh, system. Rx equal to B star is P A X equal to B star. Let me call this as system 1. This is system 1. System 1 has been rewritten in this form. Okay. If Rx equal to B star, I want to show that this has a solution. Going back if I show that this system has a solution I should call the system 2 rather this is system 2 I am claiming that these two systems are equivalent 
I am claiming that uh, if 1 is if x is a solution of system 1 then x is a solution of system 2 and conversely that is clear because uh, R is a row reduced echelon form of A okay. I want to show that this has a solution I will uh, show that system 2 has a solution it then follows that this has a solution if system 1 has a solution then R has to be invertible so A is invertible okay but look at system 2 what is the property of P that I have uh, not uh, used P is a product of elementary matrices elementary matrices are invertible product of invertible matrices is invertible so P is invertible post multiply by P inverse I get AX equals P inverse B star I will call this B double star so AX equals B double star does the system have a solution I have till now not used the fact that system condition C holds so I will use that here condition C holds so whatever be the right hand side vector see this is condition C condition C whatever be the right hand side the system AX equal to B has a solution whatever be the right hand side the system AX equal to B this has a solution AX equal to B double star this time this has a solution X so system 2 has a solution so system 1 has a solution so R the last row of R has to be non-zero so A is invertible so that is last line of the proof so R is equal to I and so A is row equivalent to I so that by the previous theorem A is invertible and that is the proof of this theorem. Okay. Okay. You have any questions? Let's move on. We need to see to conclude this uh, topic. We need two more results. Let me complete them in today's lecture. One corollary of this result. It's actually a corollary of the previous result. Let me write down this result. I'm not going to prove this. If B is rho equivalent to A, then B equal to PA, where P is invertible. If B is rho equivalent to A then B can be written as P times A where P is invertible. What we have proved earlier is that if B is rho equivalent to A then B equal to P times A where P is a product of elementary matrices. We know that uh, if you have a product of elementary matrices then that must be invertible conversely if B equal to P times A P is invertible then uh, we know by the previous theorem that P can be written as a product of elementary matrices. And so B is something like E L E L minus one etc. E one times A, so B is row equivalent to A. That's a proof. Okay, so please fill up uh, the gaps. Write down the complete proof yourselves. That's one corollary. Another consequence is the following. This is something that I mentioned in that numerical example. If a square matrix has a right inverse or a left inverse, if a square matrix is either right invertible or left invertible, then it is invertible. if A is left invertible okay let me write this as if A has a left inverse or a right inverse then A is invertible. So for square for a square matrix it is enough to verify one equation either A B equals identity or B A equals identity in order to show that it is invertible 
okay quick proof let's first take the left inverse case suppose that uh, a has a left inverse i'll call it b suppose a has a left inverse i'm calling that as b then b a equals identity left inverse so when i post multiply pre multiply a by b i get identity i want to show that a is invertible i want to appeal to the previous theorem which connects invertibility with homogeneous systems i will show that the system ax equal to 0 has only x equal to 0 as a solution so consider ax equal to b ax equal to 0 consider ax equal to 0 i want to show that this system has 0 as the only solution can you guess the next step pre multiply by b b a x is b 0 b into 0 is 0 b a is identity x is equal to 0 so what i have shown is that ax equal to 0 implies x equal to 0 that is 0 is the only solution of the homogeneous system appeal to the previous theorem i know that a is invertible that is a left inverse case if it has a left inverse then we have shown that it is invertible we must deal with the right inverse case but in mathematics there is always this reduction i would like to use what i have proved just now can i reduce this step to the previous step can i can i make use of the fact that if a has a right inverse then some matrix has a left inverse second part let uh, this is the second part suppose that a has a right inverse there exists c such that a c equals identity that is a has a right inverse then uh, c has a left inverse a c has a left inverse a by appealing to the first part uh, i know that c is invertible i know that c is invertible by the first part go back to this equation post multiply by c inverse go back to this equation ac equal to identity post multiply post multiplying by c inverse we get uh, ac c inverse equals c inverse that is a equals c inverse but i know that uh, inverse of the inverse is uh, the original matrix so a inverse is c that is c is the inverse of a that is a is invertible a is invertible and its inverse is c okay so this is another consequence one sided invertibility for a square matrix implies invertibility finally we have the last result i have a as a product of uh, k matrices where uh, each uh, ai is uh, square each ai is square so capital a is a square matrix then a is invertible if and only if each ai is invertible okay now this is a this is the last result in this topic 
this uh, again follows uh, from what we have discussed earlier one way is easy anyway if uh, each ai is invertible then the product is invertible so a is invertible so let me just write uh, in uh, shorthand notation ai invertible implies a is invertible this is done if each component if each factor is invertible then the entire product is invertible conversely we must show that if a is invertible then each factor is invertible this we have not seen before suppose that a is invertible we would like to show that each factor is invertible okay i will proceed the by showing a single factor is invertible at a time i will consider uh, the system a k x equal to 0 consider the system coming from the last factor homogeneous coming from the last factor consider a k x equal to 0 i pre multiply by a k minus 1 etc a 1 then I have a1 a2 etc ak minus 1 ak x equals 0 I pre multiply the right hand side also by this but I am uh, having the right hand side vector as 0 so the resultant vector is also 0 but this entire product is a so I have ax equal to 0 I have ax equal to 0 but I know a is invertible so by the previous theorem x equal to 0 is the only solution since a is invertible it follows that x is equal to 0 that is what we have shown is that a k x equal to 0 has x equal to 0 as the only solution a k x equal to 0 has x equal to 0 as the only solution that is what we have shown remember we have started with a k x equal to 0 that implies a x equal to 0 since a is invertible x is equal to 0. So this implies a k is invertible it is square so a k is invertible I will go back to this equation this formula for a this formula for a becomes a into a k inverse I will call it a prime a into a k inverse this time it is a1 a2 etc a k minus 1 I call it a prime this time it is a1 a2 etc a k minus 1 I am post multiplying by a k inverse which I know exists now yes a is invertible a k is invertible inverse is invertible so a prime is invertible so a k minus 1 must be invertible by the same argument as we have seen just now it follows that each factor is invertible proceeding similarly it follows that each a i is invertible okay so you see that again it is the idea of uh, homogeneous equations having 0 as the only solution that we have made use of in proving that uh, a certain matrix is invertible okay so that completes our discussion on uh, on matrices elementary row operations uh, formalizing Gaussian elimination then uh, discussing the notion of uh, elementary matrix discussing the notion of an invertible matrix finally the summary summary connecting invertibility with the uh, product of elementary matrices uh, a the invertible matrix uh, being necessarily row equivalent to identity matrix homogeneous equation necessarily having zero as the only solution non homogeneous equations always having a solution whatever be the right hand side vector okay so that's the uh, summary we would uh, from the next uh, lecture onwards we would discuss the notion of vector spaces examples of vector spaces linear transformations 
matrix representations, properties of linear transformations and other things okay I will stop here.